still got coronavirus, but uh, I'm gonna go out for a quick spin. Um, and also I've come to a decision that I'm going to start putting stuff on Instagram <clears throat> because it'll mean that I can put photos and little videos of various parts of the car. Uh, whereas this is just to, you know, get the GoPro out, do this, do that, edit it. Whereas it's just really easy to do on Instagram and I can put more content out and more information out there that, uh, oh, oh, handbrake stuck because it's been parked for ages. Um, I can put more information out there more frequently and hopefully I can run through some stuff. Uh, there we go. Um, I can run through some stuff that people have been asking me about, uh, certainly in terms of um, what they can do to go and buy a Varginus 911. Now it's going to be strange because it's not you look at all the advice that you see online, you see in YouTube videos and stuff like that, and I'm not really giving the same kind of advice because I'm not in the market for the same cars. The same cars, or I wasn't in the market for the same type of cars because everybody's saying go and buy the best one that you can afford, and that generally means go and buy one that's in fantastic condition with reasonable mileage and tons of service history and is immaculate. Um, now, none of those were my, my criteria. My criteria was I want to be driving a Porsche 911 for as little money as possible. Um, and it was a different way of doing it. I mean, I, I did do it, so I didn't follow any particular rules or advice when I went to do it. All I wanted to do was, I, you know, I wanted, to, when I saw the car, I'd check that it hasn't, you know, there's no signs of gasket, head gasket problems, there's some service history, and stuff works on the car. Now, I didn't do all of that because I, um, I didn't, I didn't drive it, so I just got it delivered, and that was the first time I could properly look at stuff. Um, and I was, you know, I was pretty devastated to learn that um, the cigarette lighter didn't work, but that has been fixed now because it was just one of the metal uh, blades at the back and just twisted out of shape. And I just had to stick some plastic in there to plug it back. Um, <clears throat> but the the real advice, I guess, is if you if you're thinking of buying something and it's cheap want it to be cheap then there's um, there's some things to remember so I was never that bothered or bothered at all about the uh, cosmetic condition so I was actually I considered buying one but it was sold where all the lacquer was flaking off it was dark blue um, and it was I think it was advertised for £10,000 this is obviously 10 months ago um, and it, yeah, all the lacquer was flaking off and it looked awful but the guy assured me it drove great but uh, it sold before I could go and see it um, so I would um, but also when you go, when you go to see a car um, <clears throat> now this is the thing if you see one advertised and it's in really good condition and you're thinking of buying it then it doesn't really matter where it is because if someone really wants it they'll go and see it but if they if you see one advertised and it's in I don't know the Outer Hebrides somewhere and it doesn't say that it's immaculate it doesn't have the you know reams and reams of service history and uh, it might have a scratch here and a ding there uh, then it's unlikely people will go and see it because people will go well actually do I really want to go that far um, and look at a car, oh, I've just been through a whole lot of mud, um, that it's unlikely that I'll, uh, I'll buy it, or it's not the kind of car that I'm in the market for. Um, so what you'll have to do is look for a car, look for one that's kind of in the ballpark of your budget, um, and if it's somewhere remote, uh, obviously phone up, ask all those questions about how it drives, if does everything work, is the liquid clear, does it make any noise or smoke and start up, you know, under acceleration, does it go straight, does the air conditioning work, that kind of stuff. That's 
all basic, everybody knows that. But if it's in, uh, not in great cosmetic condition, and all you want, you want to be driving for as little as possible at night level, then um, I would go and see it. Now, when you see it, don't be anchored by the price that it's advertised for. Always think of it as, I don't know the price, and I just need to know um, what it's worth to me. So, so if you go and see one for, it's advertised for 10,000 pounds, and you think, do you know what? I can think about buying that car. You're not there to try and make money out of it, but what you might be thinking is, I don't want to lose money. So, you know, if I come to sell it in, in one year, two years, it'd be great if I could get that money back. You know, not the money you spend on it, but the money you pay for it. So that was the thing for me. I thought this car, that's what it's worth to me. I was really apologetic when I made the offer. Uh, and I said, I didn't want it to be an insult. And you've got to be prepared for people to say, get lost, you're wasting my time. Um, but some people might just want to be getting rid of a car, no one's come to see it, and they just think, you know what, I'll take the first offer. Um, but that's, but you can't be cynical, you can't go there and say, I'm just going to make a low offer, regardless of what the car is. If it's in great condition, yeah. it's only fair to pay what, what it's worth. So if it's, if there's so many things you're uncertain about, and you think, you know what, this, this car might break down next week, it might need an engine rebuild. Well, if there's signs that it might need an engine rebuild, don't buy it. But if you think, I don't know enough about this car, it drives great now, it's making all the right noises, it feels good, um, but um, I'm unsure, then make an offer like I made the offer thinking, well, if I have to sell it on eBay as a broken car, I think I'd maybe lose a little bit of money, but it wouldn't be the end of the world. Start posting pictures on there. I'll do a little blurb about me having uh, 
feel like it would be a better way to keep it keep stuff going and it's easier to put stuff on you know if something happens I don't need to find the camera put it up edit loads of videos no I could just take um, I could just take a picture upload it with some text or I could take a video of myself with my phone talking and put that up um, but I mean the whole thing is, is still about there's got to be other cars out there like this one that were just sat there neglected uh, but essentially a good car underneath you know, 150,000 miles um, it's still going and I, and I still have that feeling in the back of my mind what if it just blows up tomorrow which it could I, I, I still think it would have been worth it because I'll, yes I'll lose money um, and I'll be devastated because I'll have lost money because uh, I can't afford to lose money and you know who can um, and remember we're thinking it's got to be on a budget you know someone who wouldn't normally be buying a Porsche 911 or would, would think I can't afford a Porsche 911 um, and the 996 you know people say you can say what they want but it's narrow body um, it's reliable it's fairly comfortable and um, and it's just such affordable fun um, so yeah I think that's pretty much it uh, that yeah that's pretty much it um, I'll, uh, so I'll poor car addict, poor car addict. Um, I'll put some blurb down here, um, and then um, hopefully it'll be easier for people to ask questions. Um, and you know, you could message me, you could send me uh, ads that you've seen. I, you know, I'm not an expert. I, I'm, I'm less of an expert. If you're watching this, thinking you're thinking maybe I should go out and buy a 996 you probably already know more about Porsches than I do or just general car buying because um, every time I bought a car I bought it on a whim um, and I'm terrible at selling cars um, so so yeah that, um, so yeah go and start following poor car addict um, it'd be great if there were more subscribers on YouTube as well um, and on the Instagram account I'd love to hear what people are saying I, mean, I know there's gonna be people who say oh you just, just wasted everybody's time it's fine those people don't have to follow me or don't have to see it but I feel like it's there's people who really want to know should I go out and do this and I, I don't think I have the answer um, but I might have some information or I might be able to offer up some something that I've seen and done that might be useful to somebody uh, who can then go out and, and buy something I mean a friend of mine he, he, he drives a, a 3 series BMW um, a GT day to day a fairly new one and he just wants a car a uh, convertible car, I'm not a fan of modern day convertible cars, uh, I've got an old 50 year old convertible um, but he wants one just to have fun in um, and he's looking at some really expensive cars and I'm saying to him just go and buy a Boxster S you know they're, they're so cheap at the moment, I, I've not driven one personally um, but you know it's a 3.2 flat, is it a flat 6? it's gotta be, um, how different can it be to this? It, it, it probably, I mean, it's going to be slightly 